So the next movie is called The Landlord. It is directed by Tanya Ayer and Rocky Black. And it features the sexy Mr. Don Snipes. So if you don't know anything about Don Snipes, he played in a movie that I can never forget. It was called Don't Look Back. And one of the main characters were Don from off of Black Ink Crew. Black Ink Crew was it Chicago? Yeah, whatever. He had like a messy situation going on all the time. So I'm glad to see him getting his shit together. But yeah, Don played in a movie with Don, <laughs> the real Don, called um, Don't Look Back. But anyway, this movie, I, I was intrigued by this movie because of the, the poster. You know, movies have posters and things like that. And this one, it had a house because it's called The Landlord. It had main character Macy, and then it had, I guess, the psycho landlord in the back. Now, she was wearing all yellow, and she had a yellow head wrap, dressed from yellow from head to toe. And um, it just gave me Ushun vibes. I automatically assumed that the movie was going to be about someone casting spells and uh, on, on a tenant. So that's why I was like, wow, let me, let me see. I, I want to see something witchy today. Uh, I was wrong, but it still was a great, excellent movie to watch. It starts off by Macy. Uh, she's in an oppressive relationship. And I say oppressive because some of us been there already, done that, whatever, out of it. And if you're out of it, congratulations. Don't ever turn back. So she's in an oppressive relationship where she can't really get out or end the relationship because of financial burdens. She has to stay in this apartment with the guy who she uh, exiled and, and dumped um, because of maybe infidelities. I assume it's infidelities because he's parading women in and out of the apartment and a specific one she just cannot stand because this, this girl has no respect for personal space and personal objects. So anyway, she goes to a coffee shop and she meets her friends. Obviously, this is where her and her friends meet up all the time. It's given me the 90s, Moesha and her girlfriends at the den. They meet up at this little quaint, Macy and her friends meet up at this little quaint coffee shop. The friends are just very supportive. One is a saved Christian. One is a vigilant. I don't want to say ratchet. She's vigilant and she's a... um real loud character. She's got street smarts, not like the save girl, not like Macy, quiet, conservative looking, natural cutie looking self. So anyway, long story short, they meet there and um, Macy is disgruntled. She's, um, she's like uh, telling her girlfriends what's going on. And her friends are like, wow, girl, I didn't even know you were going through that. We're going to help you out. You can't live there like that. You're, you're, you're supposed to be writing working on your next masterpiece so you can get this big job that you're trying, excuse me, trying to get in New York. We're going to help you, girl. So Bootylicious, the vigilant friend, and I'm saying Bootylicious because there was this one scene where she grazes, graces the uh, screen and my three-year-old looks up and says, wow, mom, she has a beautiful booty. And I start laughing because she did. She does have a beautiful booty. So Bootylicious is like, girl, I will pay for you your security deposit or whatever, first month's rent. You just can't stay with me. Um, <clears throat> I like my space. I like, I like my peace. I'll find you, um, I'll fund your apartment. You just got to find one. So Macy does the due diligence of trying to find her own apartment. Unbeknownst to them, the whole time they're having these conversations, there's some lady with the all yellow sequestered in the corner somewhere, eavesdropping on them. And she's real erratic. And I say erratic because her movement was just antsy and ooh, fidgety. Right then and there, you knew that this lady was a psychopath, possibly. Some type of something's wrong with her. Something is totally wrong with her. So she's eavesdropping. Come to find out later on in the movie, maybe 15 minutes into the movie, she um, sees Macy by herself at the coffee shop. And she says, I heard, hi, you know, I heard you were looking for an apartment. And that startles Macy her high-pitched voice, and Macy's like, okay, well, how much is it? 
And um, Ushun, I'm going to call her Ushun. Ushun tells her that it's $500 a month. And Macy is taken aback because that's goddamn cheap. Because come on, people. Come on, I live in New Jersey. You have In New Jersey nowadays, you have to, in order to survive comfortably, you have to be making $200,000 a year. And this movie is, is set in Atlanta. What fucking apartment or house is going to be $500 a month? Macy should have had her, you know, antennas up then. Didn't she's a writer or something, an editor or something. She went to college. Aren't you somewhat smart? <laughs> so that was a caveat, caveat right there that the apartment or house was $500 a month. You can't find that shit out here. Come on. You, you can't find an apartment for $500 a month. You can't find a bathroom and the, and the, and the bathtub being your bed and, and the sink being the place that you utilize the kitchen area. You can't even find that for fucking $500 a month. That should let Macy know that this shit ain't right. But I guess she's desperate. And when you're desperate, you do some crazy ass shit. I guess she's tired of being the friend that never has her shit together. I've been there and done that when I was younger. I was always the friend who always had some commotion going on, some drama, some, some girl we going out, but I, I can't go because I can't, ha I don't have any money. So my friends had to fund me, things like that. And sometimes you're desperate for your own independence. And maybe Macy was like, fuck that shit. At least it's a start. Let's go. So she ran this over by her friend because her friend Bootylicious is paying for the apartment, the house. Of course, she wants to know what, she, what the freak she's paying for. So she tells her how much the price is and things like that. And automatically, the vigilant, bootylicious friend is like, uh-uh, this lady is going to have you in the basement somewhere. Let's go check this place out. I'm going with you, girl. They go, they check it out. And automatically, like I said, bootylicious knows that sees the caveats, that this, this lady is batshit crazy. But anyway, we're going to proceed to go inside this place and scope it out. So they go, and it's a huge, humongous house, one floor type of house and um spacious clean and and macy is just so amazed she's walking around doing the tour and like wow this is beautiful blah 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 blah, blah. she takes the place um later on in the movie as she's moving in she don comes in don snipes with his fine peanut butter surfboard abs looking ass okay he comes in and he's a neighbor and he's telling her that he's an electric electrician automatically Macy is like, I can use this man for something. Now, now it's time to just use everybody around. Compartmentalize, you know, bring these people in. Let, let everybody's going to be beneficial to me at this point. Everybody is going to be my leg up at this point. So he tells her that he can install some things that will help her concentrate on being a writer. Some broader lights, per se, in her writing space. And she's all smitten by Mr. Don, who wouldn't fucking be. He's fine as hell. And um, automatically you assume that these people are going to be a, a couple of item and later on it is led to be true that they start dating each other. Now in the background, the ex who she was living with wants her back. He, got a, he has a new suitor, finds out that the new suitor is not ambition enough for him, not like Macy, not, doesn't have anything going on. All this hoochie mama wants to do is sit on the couch with her ankle bracelet on and watch Real Housewives of Atlanta. He's not used to stuff like that. And this is why I say oppressive relationships. And because sometimes in, in, in relationships, especially ones that you've been in for a long, long time, I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe I'm talking to myself. People don't have, the other person might not have patience for your success. They're just rushing, rushing, rushing for you to hurry up and get this big win. Hurry up and get to the bag, as you youngins might say. Hurry, hurry, hurry up, okay? But here's my thing. That's oppressive to me because oppression to me is pressure. And pressure never makes you succeed at anything. It's patience. So he didn't have the patience to wait for her to succeed and level up. How about you work on your goddamn self, like your morals, mister, instead of putting the pressure on her? So I'm not saying that you... It, you that, okay, maybe you don't have the patience. That, that is your characteristic flaw. You don't have patience. And maybe, I'm not saying you're a bad person, but maybe you should isolate yourself 
from that person and, and let them do their own thing. And then if you're meant to be, you come together and confluence and figure the shit out. But don't put pressure on people to be successful for your own selfish benefits. <sighs> oh, off the subject, back onto it. So um, he wants Macy back, ex-boyfriend. Boyfriend. He's going to try to do anything, whatever. This package comes to the house because Macy is trying to get this promotion to New York. And I guess he gives it, he brings it to the new place. It gets missed. It goes missing. So you automatically assume it is Ushun, the landlord, because of her behaviors. I mean, she has surveillance cameras in this Macy, Macy's house. Whether she left it there previously, who I don't know. But she has these surveillance cameras at Macy's house spying on her. So you're like, yeah, that's crazy. And then as she's spying on her, she's in this dark, eerie space. All you can see is that bright ass yellow. And also her dog is having on a yellow goddamn doggy outfit too. And she's looking and she's like, yeah, oh, Coco, Macy's going to be our new best friend. So we all know too well in, in mystery and thriller movies when the, oh, my window went down by itself. Right when I said eerie. But anyway, we all know an eerie type of mystery mystery and thriller movies that when your um bad guy or villain is off in a room somewhere where it's dark and eerie and they only give you the glimpse of their face and present but you can see around that they're dark in a dark space you don't know where they are you're led to believe that this person is crazy and that on the reason why the app the directors don't show you the entire background because they want you to assume that this bitch got bodies laying around somewhere it's this bitch is living real foul. That's how crazy they want you to make the character believe. But this is when I knew that this woman couldn't have been that crazy. The directors weren't giving me enough psychopath. Like I was waiting for her to kill Macy's friends, kill Don, because she was jealous of Don too. I was wait, waiting for her to do something fucking crazy. Eat a booger for God's sakes. Sniff some panties or something. I was waiting for her to reveal her psychoticness and it wasn't enough for me to think that she was a psychopath, that she was the psycho landlord. I see what you were trying to do, Tanja and Rocky. You know, trick a bitch. So anyway, um, the, the movie goes on and continue, goes on and goes on. And um, make a long story short, because I don't want to make these videos that long. Make a long story short. Don and uh, Macy go out on a date. And this is when I was like, something not right here. Don um, was talking to Macy about her future and, and, and things like that. Didn't, didn't want, it seemed like the discussion and the, 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 having the conversation was where like, he didn't want her to go to this New York, go to New York and start her life all, all over without him. And it was too soon for you to feel that way and have these emotions. Bitch, I just fucking met you. Let me go. It shouldn't be easy to let me go. I ain't all that. And if I am, I'm flattered. <laughs> I'm still going. So um, he was telling her, what is your plan B? If plan A doesn't work out, what's your plan B? And right then and there, I stopped because I was in the midst of cleaning up and sweeping. I stopped. I dropped my broom and I said, oh, bitch, you the crazy one. Because let me tell you something. When a person is adamant about their plan A working and they're doing the work, literally not sitting there waiting for shit to fall on their lap. They're pacing back and forth, doing the fucking work to make their dreams come true. Why the fuck would they want a plan B? She's going to keep doing plan A until it exhausts itself, until there's some type of uh, positive outcome. She's going to keep doing it. We all start off from ground zero, right? She's going to keep, that is her calling. And I feel as though like when people, if you have a calling, if you have a calling to do something, only you know what the calling is. No one knows what the calling is. Not Don, not the crazy landlord, not your peers around you, even though they're helping you. No one really knows what the calling is but you and God. So I feel as though like this flame is burning in Macy to keep trying and doing something bigger than, than what she's doing. Because not only for uh, monetary you know, benefits, but because it can possibly help other people out. People don't always do things for money. This is her passion. It is supposed to benefit others in a way of helping them, whether it's mentally, spiritually, whatever. So she feels the need to do this calling. 
and guys in your own life, even if it's delayed or, or it's taking time. Don't give up on your calling. God said that there won't, it's not going to be an easy road. There are going to be stumbling blocks. There are going to be mountains that he has to move. There are going to be delays. There are going to be times where you have to take a break and you're going to be like, God damn, oh my goodness. Every time I start this, something happens. Okay. If there's still in you and that burning desire to keep going, it will eventually happen as long as you don't give up on it. And that's why I believe that patience produces success, not pressure. So back to the story. So automatically I'm like, no, Don's the fucking psychopath. Look at his eyes. And I should have known he was a psychopath because he was a psychopath and don't look back with his fine ass. Okay. So, um, uh, I was like, uh, uh-uh, Macy, you need to go. And Macy for the first time, I guess, after dealing with oppressive relationships, she was, she cut him off. I forgot how she cut him off or why she cut him off, but she cut him off. Cut him off, was ready to go and start her new life. And this mother effer kidnaps her. Kidnaps her, puts her in, you know, ties her up in the chair and shit like that. And thank God for Ushun, because Ushun is, is, is breaching Macy's privacy by looking at her in the surveillance because she knows what's going on. She phones up her friend, Bootylicious. Bootylicious comes and um, tries to save her. But, you know, she was kind of mean to Ushun, not believing Ushun and, and just being nasty still. But, Thank God she comes and tries to rescue Macy. Don comes from behind the closet, knocks her over the motherfucking lace front. Bam, she falls on the floor. Bam, then Ushun, but well, don't give up now. Don't they? They're not, they're both not toasty. Not yet. Ushun comes out of the woodwork with a yellow freaking gun, y'all. The yellow gun to match the whole yellow ensemble. What? <laughs> so I'm like, yo, fuck. They're both crazy. So she comes and she shoots Don in the chest. But here's the thing. Here's the kicker. I think they're going to make a part two because Don's not dead. And I say that Don's not deceased because in movies, when the, the, the bad guy is deceased or something like that, them motherfuckers zip them up in a body bag. But they didn't do that to Don. They put a white, that white sheet over his body, like right here, I guess, and hoired him up in the ambulance and made sure that his body was secured and things like that. They don't do that in body bags. He's still fucking alive. They're going to have a part two, best believe. So anyway, um, now Bootylicious is hugging Ushun like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, thanks for saving my life. Now she's empathetic and, and remorseful that she treated this lady like shit. You know, you're my knight in charmer, yellow armor now. Now she's, uh, you know, kissing her and boo, boo, boo. So anyway, long story short, um, they embrace Ushun and let her into the friend circle. And I would never fucking let, it would never been that easy to let this crazy psycho into the friend circle because you don't breach someone's privacy and watch them from afar in a surveillance, you know, surveilling their house. That is like some peeping Tom shit. I, like you don't do that or, or off the sake of friendship. Cause you were just desperate for friends. No, it would never took that for, for me to say for her saving my life. It would be like, thank you, gift card um, to motherfucking um, Amazon or something, and, and bye. Bye, go get yourself some help. How about gift card to talk therapy one-on-one, that, you know, because you're not getting in this friend circle. So anyway, they um, let her in the friend circle. They uh, have this, this amazing field of camaraderie that blossoms overnight. They let her do uh, karaoke with them, uh, sip some wine. Tr- they even traded gifts and things like that. So it's, it's le- led to believe that from here on out, they're going to be all tight. So the ending goes, Macy and, and is saying her you know, goodbyes or whatever. They're all meeting up the coffee shop with Ushun. And um, the vigilant bootylicious friend gives Ushun in- an in- inquisition. She asks her, so... This whole time, that was really your, 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 your property. And she says, no, I'm renting. I was just staying in the fucking shed and so that Macy can have a place to stay. What? That's a no. Then she says, ooh, I got to slow down. Then Bootylicious says and proceeds and says, um, so, um, but, okay, so, well, who's your landlord? And Ushun says, well, I, don't, I don't know. And Bootylicious says, what? And it, everybody is quiet, like how you don't know who your landlord is. She says, I, I don't, I don't know. I've never seen the person, right? Okay, bam. 
it proceeds on. The movie proceeds on as as Macy going back to the place, her, the house where all the tragedy has happened, and her doing her last roundabouts and looking around because you know you have to say goodbye to a painful past to embrace your great future, right? Everyone has that moment of looking around and saying, "Well, uh, we, we had an experience here. Now let's create some more." You know, and that's what she was doing. So she's doing that. She's getting her last bit of items. And long and behold, there's a camera. She doesn't see it. There's a camera still in the wall somewhere or on the TV mantle somewhere. And it's looking right dead at Macy's little bright yellow face. And um, she doesn't know and realizes it's there. But then finally, when the scene fades into the abyss, into the blackness, into uh, the darkness. It fades back. And then us, the viewers and audience, are seeing these familiar type of decorations and decor and scenery. Long and behold, as it fades off and it becomes clear to us, it was the fucking coffee shop owner man the whole fucking time. He's the landlord. And he's a psychopath too. And I forgot to mention and talk about the importance and relevance of his character. Because really, I, this is the third time I'm doing this goddamn video. Are you seen it? If you didn't see it, I ain't spoiling that fucking much. But yeah, come to find out, it is three crazy people in that movie. Three! Three. And the message to me was, I always individualize these messages. Don't let oppressive relationship, oppressive relationships void and veil your calling of what God intends you to do. Because sometimes the occupation, the dream, or whatever that you're destined to do is not only for you. It's bigger than you, baby. It's to help a mass of people or a group of people or help one individual figure some shit out about themselves. It's not always, a calling is not always about you. So it'll be, it will behoove you not to, to stay in an oppressive relationship and negate, negate your calling. Until next time, you've been watching Fill It.